Well, thank you everyone for uh, watching the film. And now I'm joined with, by the director, uh, Rachel Carey and uh, the cast. And why don't I have all, all of you just introduce yourselves uh, one by one and tell us uh, who you are and um, if you were in the film, who you played. Uh, I'm Angeline Ball and I play Michelle. I'm Erica Rowe and I play Stacy. I'm Shauna Higgins and I play Chantel. I'm Lauren Larkin and I play Gemma. Oh, me too, sorry. I thought it was just Kat. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm Rachel Carey and I am the writer and director of Daddy Cuts. Well, uh, I guess my first question goes to you, Rachel. Uh, what was the inspiration for the film? When, when, how did you come up with the concept? Um, I think originally the inspiration was really like, um, young women in Dublin really and there's a certain kind of type of humor and uh, way of, of kind of speaking that you get especially in, in working class young women young women that we just ne weren't really seen on screens at all over here and it's just it's so funny and it's so quick um, so I'd always had thought in the back of my mind that I'd love to do something with that and I'd love to create comedy with that because it just felt like such a missed opportunity um, here in Dublin and for the rest of the world to hear. Um, so that was always in the back of my mind. And then I go to the hairdressers a lot um, <laughs> when we can. And that's where you'd really hear that voice fly. You know, it tends to be a lot of kind of younger women, often from working class backgrounds. And you just hear a lot of gossip and a lot of talk and a lot of fun. And uh, that's probably the first spark of the idea. I thought this is just ripe for a great Dublin comedy film. And so did you spend a lot of time or more time with her hairdresser and the uh, the other workers there to to kind of get the the good background for material for this. I did, yeah. That was my excuse, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, like in different ways. I kind of my own hairdresser, uh, who's actually called Gemma. Um, I kind of used her a lot to mine the detailed information um, and sort of try and get the specifics right. But then I also went to a lot more hairdressers in sort of little working class areas like Piglinstown, um, because every area in Dublin has a little local hairdresser. So I spent a lot more time going out there and kind of getting my hair done and, and telling them about the film and spending a bit more time in places like that and just finding out about the area and and I guess the, the dynamics more specifically of the little hair shops. Did they have any good pointers for you? I mean, was, uh, what kind of what was the main thing you learned about that from them that you put into the film? Yeah, a lot actually. I think, you know, first and foremost, obviously there was the by osmosis. You just sort of, you kind of gathered the atmosphere and generally how things work and how things speak to, people speak to each other and jokes, you know, like there'd just always be a lot of fun um, happening. So there was that, but also like kind of down to the, to the issues that might surround certain areas, um, you know, and, and how the, um, the hairdresser can kind of serve as a little bit of a community hub when communities don't really have much else um, going on or they've been stripped to services and things like that, how the hairdressers can often become like a community center, I suppose, and, and, and the heart of the community for a lot of people. And, and I think that's what I really wanted to capture in, in the world of Deadly Cuts. Uh, well, let's open up the, the conversation to the cast. Um, for both the director and the performers, discuss the casting process. Uh, what were you as a director uh, looking for in each character? And um, for the actresses, uh, what was your first impression of, you know, the script when you received it? And uh, what was your, what was the audition process like uh, for the, the film? I'll, I'll just say very briefly, I'll let the girls take over. For me, casting, I was looking for, there was like a holy trinity that I was looking for. So, you know, and it started with obviously the four girls. So for everyone, I had good actor, which is always nice. <laughs> Comedic, you know, good comic timing, which I think is a whole other skill set. And then authenticity. Um, I really wanted people who were proper Dublin actors and, and knew the world I was trying to create. So, so that's what I set out to look for. And I was very lucky to find it, but I'll let the girls themselves. Do you want to start, Angeline? Or... You're muted. <laughs> Do 
You're on mute. <laughs> I had to mute because there was loads of bells going off. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, I think, you know, Rachel is, is, is completely right. You know, um, the script, when I read it, it has that real authenticity to it. And the thing about it is that, you know, um, I think it's great that she actually, yeah, we just sorry, cool. my computer is terrible. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's really brilliant that she did actually cast people that were, you know, uh, the right, you know, just really, really authentic Dubliners. Because I think all too often, sometimes in films, you will always get like a, a public, public school boy playing a working class role, but you very rarely get the opposite, like a working class actress, actor playing an upper crust role. So to actually kind of, you know, really, really cast um, the real thing was number one, amazing. Uh, the way she writes is incredible. It's completely, you know, you hear people talking like that. So uh, there's a rhythm in the language and there's like this the jokes kind of, you know, trip off the tongue. So I think, you know, I think it was brilliant that she got all of us and um, who are from, you know, the areas to, to be able to, um, to do the script justice, you know? And I think, um, also, there's a great mix amongst us. We got on so well. And I think when I read the script, I really just felt I would, I have to play this. You know, I just would be so disgusted if somebody else played it. So <laughs> I was really delighted. And I think secretly, I always wanted to be a hairdresser. So I get to play it in the end, you know, but I mean, the girls are just fabulous. They're just brilliant. Um, Erica? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm the same, yeah, when I first read this script, me and Shauna actually did the reading for the producer's, um, what do you call it, Rachel, the producer's pitch, Just isn't it? The table read. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when I first, like, that was the first time I read it. And see, a lot of the time, like, working class Dublin is kind of depicted as this crime riddled area. And we don't get to see quite a lot the community and working class Dublin humour and wit and when I just seen that in the script I, I was just captured by it and yeah loved it. Yeah I'd like touching on what Erica is saying after after we read the table read we went and uh, we got a burrito and the two of us were sitting there <laughs> looking at each other being like what do we do how do we how do we get ourselves cast in this film this is us we, like we're both so like our characters um and then I remember the audition process then there there wasn't really much talk of it, but they were they were cast uh, Rachel and Amy around the cast and they were cast in the role of Gemma. And me and Erica were asked in to help out. And um, we were the, the two of us were just we were playing our own roles, like what we ended up getting cast as, but there was no casting process for either of our roles, but we were still none the wiser if the parts were ours <laughs> and we were freaking out, but um yeah, it all worked out for the best. Huh? <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't did know you know, you the two of us would literally be texting each other being like, what, what is going on? Like, are these other roles? Why aren't they auditioning for our parents? <laughs> and you know me, big paranoid head of me. <laughs> I was so worried. Sorry, Sorry my that. internet connection is really bad. So is mine. Sorry. Sorry, you can't continue. Laura, you want to go? Yeah, um, well... I was uh, late to the party. I think the three other women were cast before me and er- me, self and Erica were friends beforehand and I knew Shauna kind of vaguely. So when I went in to do the audition, I think it was pretty obvious from when I got in there that the three of us got on really well and that it would, it, 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 we, we were the right fit for yeah. together. Um, and yeah, that, that was really it. I, I found... I connected with the character straight away because generally in life I tend to be like an Agni Ant style character in life <laughs> as well. So um yeah, it was it kind of felt like just it all felt very right, you know, uh from the get-go. Yeah. Because I even remember when there was other other people coming in auditioning for Gemma, they were brilliant. They were all really good. But then when you came in there and it was just like, oh my God, this is this is it now. Like it was the the chemistry between the three of us it was just it was so natural from the get-go yeah that leads into my next question which is the chemistry in the film between all the characters is so great um 
how did that come about on set? Was there any, re was it was rehearsal time or was it just kind of a, an instant thing when you all met or talk a little bit about the process of building the chemistry between not only the actresses, but the, the chemistry, uh, the characters on set. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, the girls have, have sort of covered, you know, from the audition process because they kind of knew each other. It clicked very, very quickly. And I think Dublin's kind of like that, isn't it? It's like, you know, we, we tend to just get on well a lot of the time very easily and especially when there's humor involved and and there's a bit of crack so, so the girls we didn't have a huge amount of rehearsal time um really at all like the, the audition process was really it like Angeline I didn't really yeah we're just kids almost cool I'm so cool <laughs> there's a ghost in the machine um, you know Angeline I didn't meet until I, I think the week before you know we were we were prepping um so you know there was there was a degree of luck that came into it and that Angeline just fit into the trio so easily um we spent a bit of time together you know beforehand we went to a little salon together um to, for the girls to kind of get their hair looks developed in advance of, of um pre-production and we had the crack in the salon that day and kind of just hung out. Um, and from there, it was just really, I mean, for me as director, it was really about creating an atmosphere on set that was was um, conducive to comedy and, and a good time where people could also do work. Cause I think that's just, that's where chemistry comes from really. It's like, well, in comedy terms, it's like, are we enjoying ourselves? Like it's a lot of work. But mm. I think that's really where it came from. Like when the camera stopped rolling, we didn't stop laughing. And it just, we were lucky enough with everybody involved to be able to develop that kind of an atmosphere on set. And I think it really translated. I'll, I'll pass it over to the girls. Dave, that now to. Well, I just noticed from this, like sometimes I find that all it takes is one thing to have in common with someone. And then you're just, we're grand. Um, and we're all sorted. So I think the fact that Sean and Erica knew each other beforehand. Myself and Erica knew each other beforehand. Then Angeline, uh, we, we met Angeline when she came over to, to do the part or whatever. And we all just kind of found a thing. Like myself, Shauna and Angeline are from the same area in Dublin. We clicked on that straight away then. And then we were all just a little family from pretty much day one, you know? So I it's like... I think also with the script, because we talked about it being authentic, um, there's no room for airs and graces really in it. And I think we would have weeded out that if any of us were a little bit kind of diva-ish or uppity. I think they would have been gone. <laughs> so I think, you know, it's about being true to the characters and it's about being true to each other, you know, and there's just no room for any of that. And we're not those kind of people, actresses anyway, or actors. So I think it was um, pretty evident from the get-go that we were going to have a good time, you know? Yeah, and we did like literally, as Rachel said, as soon as the camera stopped rolling, we were like laughing so much. Avi and the producer sent me a video um, a few weeks ago of me and Shauna, and we're just sitting on one of the chairs, pissing ourselves, laughing. Like, and it just brought me right back to when we were doing it. And I was just thinking of the four of us and Rachel and JJ, the DOP, and all the crew, every, anyone that came onto the set, like any cast. It was just, they were just great crack and we just all had a ball. And I think that just, that really translate. No, I think it really translated from the everyday life on set. And then I think that really translated onto camera as well, that how much fun we were actually having. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we can let that go at that um <laughs> where in dublin did you uh shoot the film uh the film the online on location aspects of the film um, um we shot it in a place called Lachlanstown, um which did not inspire the name piglinstown it was just <laughs> a recce um which is over on the it's a small area over on south side i actually wasn't massively familiar with it to be honest um but it really had everything that we were looking for and that it had that very typical um, sort of Dublin working class suburb row of shops. I, I really think it is a sort of Dublin phenomenon. And there's always the, the chipper, the hairdressers, the pub, 
we were just missing the bookies, you know. So um, <laughs> and and but the the biggest thing about lock and so it worked really well, like uh, um, logistically. But also there was a great community in Lockingstown. There really was. Um, apart from the fact there was, remember there was a stabbing the week before we were shooting there. I don't know, do you remember? Oh, yeah. We didn't know that. <laughs> I just did. Oh, actually, yeah, I do remember. So we were driving out on the final recce's and there was like police tape up and <laughs> a bit too authentic. But um, there was a really great community there so, and they all really got involved. They were all so excited by it. So the, the pub where we shot the Piglins Town Inn was the Lachlan's Town Inn. And, and um, you know, we used that bit of that as a green room. We'd go in there for sandwiches and, you know, we used extras from, from around the place and everyone just got really involved actually in Lachlan's Town. So it was great. Now, was this film pre-COVID or did you run into did it overlap into the COVID or was it where on the timeline of the pandemic did the production, the main shoot of the production fall? We dodged COVID actually. We wrapped on the 14th of December, 2019. So COVID oh, wow. interrupted our post, but we were, it wasn't even COVID, it wasn't a word we knew <laughs> when we wrapped. So we were so lucky. So what was the most Let's get this one out of the way. What was the most difficult part of the shoot for uh, you all? Uh, well, even though like we were only saying, even though it was pre, pre-COVID, there was a few sicknesses, me and Sean were only saying earlier on, um, yeah. there was quite a few sicknesses okay. on the set as well. So, Sorry, I, I, did I do something? No, 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 I think I think the, the computer just popped in again. I was going to mute for a while, and then when I talk, I'll unmute. Yeah, so you were saying about the sicknesses, that was like, we were trying to dodge, there was vomit and bugs, and then Lauren was so sick, so I think it was really difficult to try not get sick, so we could continue. There was a re like everyone, like our, like our set dresser got sick, uh, myself like I got really really like the worst chest infection in my whole life people say to me still maybe you had COVID <laughs> and um Angeline got sick like Holly McGlynn Holly McGlynn I mean, our, our set was riddled with sickness for <laughs> one whole week of our pretty first, much our first AD he was gone for a while you remember yeah yeah because it was yeah. the height of winter um Dan and it was like we were it wasn't a luxurious shoot like put it that way you know so it was we were off and just freezing <laughs> so and you know and the, just some sort of flu went around so that was definitely a challenge for me I think um logistically it was our hair it, it was a, so much fun but the, the hair contest we went out it was like big set pieces with a lot of extras it was a big location huge art department job um and we'd a lot to shoot in a small amount of time. So for me, that was probably the most challenging, I think, just in terms of kind of getting everything done and with just such a huge, uh, with such a huge set and so many people. It was great, but definitely that was for me the most difficult, I think. Yeah, that kind of leads into my next question, which is talking a little bit about the, the Ah Hair contest, because it is, the most important event in the film and it's such a huge scale can you talk a little bit about the art and set direction of that and the costuming and the, all of the various technical elements that went into making that come off as looking at like the finale that it, it truly it, it came across as yeah um it was i mean there was so many elements that went into it i think the 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 first thing to say is it's inspired absolutely by real hairdressing contests. So it's not much of an exaggeration at all when you see, you know, the, the, the glamour and the scale and how it's all like, so the drama and the stage settings and everything. So I kind of went to a few of those competitions. Um, I'd been looking at a lot of them online, but I, I went along to a few. And you really, I mean, you couldn't make it up. I think what's in that film is actually a toned down version of what you can see. I mean, 
the avant-garde hair pieces in themselves are just crazy you know amazing and then everybody is so done up like really really over the top um it's just very very glitter and sequins and I just loved it and I think you know I I love Strictly Ballroom and I just loved how that brought the world of professional ballroom dancing you know like what the hell is that and what does it look like so that's what I really wanted to do with our hair and um, the, the challenge was we had a small enough budget and it had to look prestigious and it had to look elite because that was the whole point of it so luckily um, I had Tamara Conboy she's an absolutely brilliant um, art director and a, her brilliant team came on board and she took on the challenge and I don't know how she did it with between her and JJ my DP and his lighting team they just managed to create out of a pretty kind of shitty looking venue actually and mm-hmm. um, they created this this world um that looked the way I wanted to look and then Kathy Strachan who did our costume and Lindsay Heron who did hair both of whom are just did such an amazing job again like the budget was not there and they just pulled out all the stops to to um bring that color and glamour that I wanted to it um and I really wanted to push that because a big contrast from Piglinstown we go into a whole new world in our hair so I really wanted people to immerse themselves in that so yeah there was there was just a lot of effort from a lot of people I think And the, the cast, did you, uh, you must have been aware of these kind of hairdressing competitions. Did you go and seek any of them out for research to kind of see what you were getting into or what the what you were supposed to be getting into? I actually, I didn't. No, we didn't. I think I, I went to one year. A few, a couple of my friends are hairdressers and I would have went to a couple of competitions years ago with them as well. And like Rachel said, they are, they're just, they're mad out of this world. <laughs> like. I think it was kind of um, kind of good that I hadn't really been to one because Chantal in particular, like all of our characters are supposed to be kind of starstruck to everything. And like the um, Dalton Chadwick kind of, uh, their crew, the other elite salon, like you're supposed to be intimidated by that. So I think it kind of worked well that none of us had really much experience at those. Um, how long did that uh, portion of the film take to shoot? Uh, and was it at the beginning of the production or was that near more towards the end? That was towards the end. And we did all of that. We did the, the heats kind of rounds and then the final were in two different locations. And that was over um, about eight days, I think, in total. Eight packed days. Um, so yeah, it was towards the end. I think then we just went back to Piglinstown for for a last couple of days in the pub. Um, but yeah, it was it was towards the end. So we were all we were flying along at that stage. One one of your green rooms though was a karaoke room <laughs> because it was in like an old like a, a nightclub. And uh, they gave us one of the karaoke rooms for our green room. So we were up there on the, on our breaks. <laughs> I think they regretted it at some point. <laughs> they did regret it, yeah. I think someone came up at one point and told us to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was nice that you could end the, the shoot at the pub. <laughs> It'd kind of lead right into the rap party, I bet. Um, what, what, was, what all was your favorite parts of the film, ma- making the film, the production? Right, you want to go first, girls? Angeline? Uh, my favourite part was when we had to carry the dead body. Um, <laughs> um, it was really heavy. <laughs> and it was really creepy. And you kept holding its hand, Eric. <laughs> yeah. And putting it certain parts of her body. <laughs> won't go there. But um, we actually had to, you know, carry it. And we just could not finish the scene we were la- crying laughing so much so for me somebody took a video of that and I love that and every time I watch that video I cry laughing again <laughs> that for me was the best <laughs> so yeah honestly I think my favorite part was getting in trouble by our first AD on a daily basis for laughing too much <laughs> Um, a few times Rachel and uh, JJ 
the DOP also got in trouble for laughing too much. So that that was my favorite part. Just the crack we yeah. had on set. Like it was just amazing. We were just like a big family. Yeah, I, I like that as well. I just every day, like it was great crack. But I think one of my favorite scenes to film is the scene with me and Angeline outside the pub at the end. Because there's, there's, it's so funny throughout the whole film and it's so heightened. And then that scene as well, you just get to see such a vulnerability in both of them, in Michelle and Stacey. And it's, yeah, that was probably my favourite scene to shoot for the, the thing. I'm trying to think now. Because <laughs> I agree with all of them. I want to go, oh, yeah, oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think just, I, I can't even pinpoint what one favorite bit because I think I always just think back to the experience as a kind of a whole and um, and the main thing I remember is kind of like Shauna was saying the laughing getting into trouble kind of feeling like bold little schoolgirl sometimes you know and that was very enjoyable and there was a lot of kind of mischief and yeah I love that I think for me it would probably be I probably enjoyed this some days were stressful but I think um any day Barbara Brennan was on set. So Barbara Brennan um, da plays Mrs. Quinn, um, <laughs> the sort of older matriarch lady. And she's just, an, she's an incredible actor, like incredible pedigree. And she came on and she was so game and she just killed every single line. So anytime she was on set, there was always a, a bit of an ensemble around her, you know, so there'd always be a few people in the scene and it was just, so funny and she just you knew it was going to be hilarious when Barbara came on set and there was definitely she made, it, she made a choice and then she just ran with the choice and that was it then wasn't it yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there was a certain day she couldn't she couldn't um it was late in the day and there's a line where she talks about someone called Noli Poli mm -hmm. and uh they, they, everyone kept laughing on the line and she just kept getting it wrong then but she was just laughing about it and it was I mean it was hitting kind of rap time oh it was just me and just, Lauren just... were crying laughing we couldn't actually even get through the scene now we were literally looking down I think we actually ended up having to reshoot me and Lauren's uh uh, one of me and Lauren's shots didn't we because we were laughing so much we had it we had it we just didn't have a wide so uh we got we don't always get there in the end like everyone was we're talking a lot about the laughter but it, but everyone was also super professional you know we always the girls were able to pull it out and you know uh whenever we had to or when time was getting short we all we always got our scenes but um yeah it was just funny great scene. well the film is kind of early on its festival life uh due to the COVID and you recently had the honor of closing out the Dublin Film Festival. Talk a little bit about um, your reaction to the film from that screening and what it's kind of been like to have it be in such a, a prestigious slot, but kind of not being able to, to attend in person. Yeah, it was, it was, it's, it's been strange, you know, experiencing it all from our living rooms, you know, um, it's probably not at all what we expected. The film was, we, you know, it was meant to be out for festivals sort of summer 2020. But in a way, I kind of, I really feel like Dublin, I love the Dublin Film Festival anyway, genuinely, I think it's a brilliant festival. And for a Dublin film to premiere at Dublin, and then when it got the close in gala, I was like, this is amazing. This is exactly where it should be and how it should, how it should launch. And um, the fact that it was COVID, you know, it's you know it's disappointing but I feel like because it's a comedy it's the kind of film Dublin needed and, and needs at the moment and it's just so that the press has been really really nice and everyone just feels so excited for it and then after the screening I mean you're kind of just basing it on the messages you get immediately um but it's just as far as I can tell people just seem to have really enjoyed it and it's been a long time coming that there's a Dublin comedy, I think, is the consensus. I don't know about the girls. No, definitely. I mean, that was my thought when I first saw it too during the submissions process was like, oh yeah, this is, this is the film that I want people to be able to share with and see in their living room. It will kind of lift up their spirits after the year that we've been going through. Um, well, we're almost out of time, but um, 
let's talk about what you have going on next for the cast and crew um, or the director and crew or cast <laughs> director and cast and Angelina why don't you start because I'll, you're in location right now aren't you I am yeah um, again with COVID I, I did a series back in 2019 called Acceptable Risk where I played a cop um, and there was talk rumors about it maybe going to a, a you know a spin-off um, and I, you know, been approached about this about three years ago or whatever. Um, and then it, it got pushed and it got pushed and it got pushed. And I kind of still can't believe that it's actually being made. But I'm really blessed. And, you know, I, I, I just think it's brilliant. We're starting uh, filming and it's a Belgian, Canadian, Irish co-production. So we're filming here for nine weeks and then on the west coast of Ireland in Ennis for five. And then it's going to be edited in Canada. It's written by Peter McKenna and uh, Morna Regan. So it's it's pretty good. But I'm super grateful um, because I know that, like, it's so hard. It's hard anyway being an actor, whether you get work or not, because you can be on a lucky kind of wave. And then sometimes there's nothing, you know, and that's just the nature of our business. So, um, I, you know, I don't take it with, um, you know, don't take it with a pinch of salt. It's like, yeah, I'm working and it's great. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, because of COVID, it's a bit difficult because I have to be here and I have to quarantine and I have to do that. But look, sure, as they say, once you're working. So that's what I'm on at the moment, which is great. Uh, Erica, why don't you go ahead? And go yeah, ahead. Uh, I'm currently working on a piece with... Um, Mark O'Brien, written by Dermot Bulger, and it's about the North Strand bombings that happened during World War II. So it's a theatre piece, but we're going to um, film it, and then it will be on for a couple of nights during the um, anniversary. And then I also have a film coming out this summer in Ireland, which is actually already out in the US, called Herself, um, and that was directed by Phila Lloyd and written by Claire Dunn. So so I have to look forward to at the moment. <laughs> Ashana, why don't you go next? Um, I am currently in the very, very early um, development stage of a screenplay. I'm writing it with my mum. She'd probably kill me for telling people because it's not something that she does, but she had this idea of a novel that she um, was writing and me being an actor was like hey why don't we turn it into a screenplay and I can play the lead role so we're in the very early um stages of developing that but um yeah hopefully hopefully it's developed soon so that's what I'm doing currently oh, Lauren um so I have a film that should be out this the end of this year called The Black Gulf and it's written by John Connors and Tiernan Williams and it's another comedy, lol, I'm only joking. It's about um, <laughs> clerical clerical uh, and institutional abuse and how it's kind of, it, it affects generations of families, not just the person who went through it. It affects families for years and years and years to come. So um, that will be out at the end of this year. And I'm also like Shauna, writing away, I'm writing a screenplay and I'm writing a a theater piece as well and um, so yeah and rachel what's up next for you um i have just got loads of plates spinning i'm trying to strike while the iron's hot now and, and uh so i've got my next comedy feature is in development officially now and it's another female ensemble comedy um yes i'm working on that at the moment <laughs> <Any parents go? laughs> and i'm also we're developing the series pitch for Deadly Cooks, inevitably. So I've just written the pilot for that and uh, we're kind of working away on the Bible of that. And then I'm, that's what I'm writing myself. And then I'm chatting to a few other people about other projects. I'd love to direct something that I didn't write myself as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of in the mix with loads of people at the moment and just gonna see what hits, just be, be ready to get out of the gates as soon as restrictions end I think with the next project is is my plan for, for the moment so yeah just busy. I was gonna say, say the uh that last scene of deadly cuts lends itself so well to a sequel or some sort of continuation so it's nice mm -hmm. to hear that there's a, a potential series in the works we all said it 
Yeah, I hope, P- I hope PJ gets a little bit more of a um, appearance with Lindsay. <laughs> PJ. <laughs> Where's PJ? <laughs> Posh fella from the south side. Oh, JP. Oh, JP. <laughs> PJ. What did I say? PJ. PJ. We'll change it to PJ. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you all so much for uh, joining me for this q a today um and thank you all so much for being part of deadly cuts and and bringing it to seattle uh virtually and hopefully uh in a future uh festival we can have you all on stage and in person doing a, something like this with our audience so thank you so much thank you Stan. thanks so much dan thank, thank you. you thank you